Ladies and gentlemen, we have a Super Sunday trade, a Sunday afternoon of the Super Bowl trade in which the Twins are acquiring a left-handed relief pitcher, Stephen Okert, from the Miami Marlins for Nick Gordon. Not exactly the most uh, earth-shattering uh, move out there, but I think this makes a lot of sense. Um, I think these are, are a couple guys that were kind of in, in a tight spot in both of their both organizations being out of options. That's such a tricky situation uh, for a player when you're out of options. You have to be on the major league roster if you're active. Um, and Nick Gordon, kind of an extra piece in the Twins. Uh, Steven Okert, maybe you could argue, is kind of an extra piece on the Marlins as well. So I think this swap kind of gets both of these players into situations that make more sense for them individually. Um, so I like this deal for the Twins. Again, it's, it's not we're, we're not going to be out there uh, buying uh, Steven Okert Twins jerseys or anything. So uh, I don't want to over over uh, emphasize this deal, but I do think it makes the, uh, sense in terms of making this a more functional 26 man roster for the Twins. And I think I still think there's probably some more moves to come. Maybe maybe nothing else earth shattering, but we'll talk about that in a moment. First, just want to call out uh, the, this was reported on today by Robert Murray and Craig Mish, kind of were the two guys on Twitter that first had the details. Uh, so tip of the ta- cap to those guys. And uh, let's talk about Nick Gordon first, because he's a guy I think it's easy to forget how good his 2022 season was. Um, Really came in and played well for the Twins in in a moment of need for them. But, you know, taking a look at things as they are, he kind of got surpassed. Uh, He kind of got surpassed in his bench role by Willie Castro. Um, So that definitely factored into it. And then just in terms of fit, once again, um, not only could he not be sent down to the minors if that was, you'll see he's depth, but he's, he's major league depth. You can't really send him down uh, without him cl- going on waivers, which he probably wouldn't clear waivers because he's a guy who's had some success in the major leagues. Uh, but then you have this. He's a left-handed hitter. I mean, that's kind of the, the worst thing going for Nick Gordon in this organization right now where, you know, he's really mainly a corner outfielder. He could play other positions, but that's sort of where he's best. And it just so happens that, like, every corner outfielder the Twins have – also hits left-handed, and as you see here, Nick Gordon, um, you know, he hasn't had a ton of opportunities to be fair, but he has not hit at all against left-handed pitching. So um, he is a platoon bench bat that probably is, you know, not going to be able to play a premium position like center field or shortstop for a extended period of time. You could put him there in an emergency, but you're not like rolling with Nick Gordon as your guy there for a month if if your main guy goes down or whatever. Um, so he's kind of. You know, he's kind of limited, to, to put it that way. And I really like Nick Gordon. I know a lot of people were, were saying, you know, he was probably going to get DFA'd or whatever. I certainly would have rather kept him. But I like I like this move, and I think it makes sense that they traded him. Um, again, the fit is just a tough fit. Uh, guy brings a load of energy, and I love love that about him. I love that he was pumping up the crowd during the wild card series and all that. So I appreciate Nick Gordon uh, for everything he's done here. But... Um, and hopefully this is a better move for him. You know, if he's going to, I don't know Miami's roster uh, quite as well, especially to this level of like their depth pieces and what they need in a bench guy. Uh, but I assume that that you know that that's part of what made him a target from them is he fits in better there than he would with the Twins. So you know, hopefully this is a win-win, uh, and and that this is a good situation for Nick Gordon too. But shifting our focus to the new guy, Stephen Okert here again. He's a left-handed pitcher. He's got his baseball savant sliders up and then his platoon splits because that's that's uh, I think noteworthy on him as well is that yes, this is a left-handed relief pitcher, but holds his own against right-handed batters, which is so key in the three batter minimum era that we're in now that as a lefty, you have to get both sides out and Steven Okert can do that. So um, he's obviously much more effective against lefties, uh, but uh, you can still have him out there against righties. So that's really great. Uh, we'll talk about the roster too because I think he was also he's also a good fit on the roster as opposed to Gordon who is kind of a poor fit. This guy's a good fit on the roster. Uh, but as you can see from his baseball savant sliders, um, there are some things that don't look real great. You know, he's an extreme fly ball pitcher. Um, you'd prefer ground balls, I, I would say. And this he's in the bottom 1% in ground ball percentage from last year. Effective, though. There, there's, uh, there's no denying that. There, there was a point in which... Um, you know, I was trying to think about, okay, well, why would this guy have been someone Miami was willing to move? Because, um, you know, Nick Gordon's not, you know, again, I, I try to emphasize the thing he does, what things he does well, and he's proved that he can hit uh, a little bit against right-handed pitching in, in the major leagues. And, uh, so it's not like he's completely without value or anything, but I'm trying, I was trying to think like, okay, well, why would the Marlins, why, why did Stephen Okert make sense as the guy the Marlins would send off? One of the things 
there, there's, there's other things in addition to this. But one of the things that really stood out to me was, and that I'm a little, little bit concerned about, uh, is how poorly he ended last season. Uh, his last 18 games, uh, you see here, he had an 8.64 ERA. Uh, yeah, that's rough. That's rough. 16 earned runs and 16 and two third innings. Walked nine batters over that stretch. Gave up four home runs over that stretch. A 9.30 OPS over that stretch. Um, that's real bad. As you can see, before that. Uh, he had entered this bad stretch with a 2.79 ERA in the season. So he'd been pitching really well. Uh, the previous two years he pitched well. Um, so it's like, well, what happened here in like mid-August on? And, you know, I, we would have to dig. I'd have to take some more time and dig a little bit deeper to try to figure that out. But um, I'm, sh I'm sure the Twins have looked into that. Uh, but that's a concern. And I'm guessing Miami is maybe a little bit more concerned about that than maybe the Twins might be. Maybe. I don't know. But that certainly stood out to me as something to take note of. However, if we zoom out, uh, which is probably the mo the better way to evaluate a player under normal circumstances, unless there is an injury concern with that end of the season with Okert, that would be sort of a caveat that would change this conversation. But other than that, I would say it's more effective to zoom out and take a look at a bigger sample and over the past three seasons is what I have pulled up here. Orchard actually compares pretty favorably uh, to Caleb Thielbar. Not as good as Thielbar, uh, but Caleb Thielbar, you're expecting to be your top lefty in the bullpen right now. Um, and you're, you're getting Okert for kind of a spare piece. You were not expecting him to be, again, like some kind of lights out uh, back end of the bullpen guy when he, he's the guy you're getting in a return for Nick Gordon. But uh, Thielbar over that stretch... Uh, that, and actually, their innings are incredibly similar. Less than 10 innings separate the two in this sample. Thielbar with a 3.33 ERA, Okert at 3.51. Uh, Thielbar with a 1.12 whip, Okert at a 1.17. Now, some of the other numbers, you know, are a little bit more uh, slanted in Thielbar's um, side, and some of the more predictive numbers are slanted in Thielbar's side. But, to be fair, this is a sample of over 140 innings for both of these guys, so... Um, pretty close in terms of their uh, their actual raw performance. But you can see from the FIP, uh, Okert's FIP is almost an entire run higher than Thielbar's. Uh, gives up some more home runs than Thielbar. It gives up a lot more walks than Thielbar. Um, but this is a legit established left-handed uh, MLB reliever, which the Twins only had Thielbar, who he's getting up there. Um, and then they do have Cody Funderburk, who I like a lot. But I like him so much more as your third lefty in the bullpen than I do as a second lefty in the bullpen. I feel like left-handed uh, relief pitching has gone from a, a part of this team that I felt good about but really quickly could be you, know, you take Thielbar out of the equation and it's all of a sudden kind of a question mark. Because uh, remember, Giovanni Maran is out this season. Uh, so now getting Okert in there get, gets a lot of certainty in there. So let's take a look at how, how this impacts the roster. Um, so on the on the position player side with Nick Gordon out, what roster resource at Fangraphs is projecting is they've put Jose Miranda on the active roster. I do not think that's how it'll shake out. I, I have a really hard time believing that Kirilov, Santana, and Jose Miranda will all be on the active roster. I'm not saying that it's definitely not going to happen, but my assumption is that Jose Miranda's current spot here is probably going to end up being filled by somebody not currently in the organization. Whether they go out and acquire a guy or uh, via free agency or trade, there's still a lot of avenues to 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 kind of make some of these moves. So um, I'm assuming that Nick Gordon's spot won't be filled by Miranda. Uh, it'll probably be filled by somebody not currently in the organization, maybe like a Tommy Pham type on the free agent market. Um, you know, I would love to see them get in on J.D. Martinez or Jorge Soler, um, but I'm not sure that, that that's going to happen. We'll we'll see. Trade market's much more difficult to pr uh, predict, but there are uh, plenty of other guys you know that we probably wouldn't think of on the trade market that that can be traded for. Uh, this this trade here is kind of a good example of that. So um, that's the position player side. Obviously, the pitching side is where the, the bigger kind of impact comes in with Okert sliding here. I wanted to put his profile up above me here to show that he is out of options. So this is not a guy. This also is not a guy you can send down. You know, much like Nick Gordon. And so there's actually a lot of these guys in the bullpen now that don't have a whole lot of flexibility. Of course, you're not hoping that you would send down Duran or Jax. They have options, but you are assuming we would not need to go there uh, since those are two of the top guys. 
But Brock Stewart, Caleb Thielbart, Jay Jackson, Stephen Okert, uh, Di Scalfani, I should call out that I expect him to be the fifth starter and Louis Varland staying in St. Paul for rotation depth as of now. As of now. Um, you know, we'll see how things develop. But, um, you know, again, sort of the, the bullpen's kind of getting pretty locked in, I would say. Okert is definitely going to be on the major league roster you know, as, as a established major leaguer um, without no options. So uh, he slides in there quite well. Josh Stamont, um, I don't think we have an official really – I haven't seen. I should put it that way. I haven't seen an official – sort of projection of when he's expected to be healthy. He had that surgery to uh, try to adjust uh, TOS, uh, thoracic outlet syndrome. That's a really – some guys can come back really quick from that. Some guys take a really long time. Some guys never come back from that. So it's a really tricky one to try to project. But he did have that in July. Um, so it's possible that he is able to throw and is in the mix for opening day. I'm going to go with this projection here and expect that Stamont's going to be on the injured list to start the year. That's kind of what my assumption has been, but we will certainly monitor that uh, situation. So what do you think about this trade? Um, Let me know. I want to let you know, too, the issue two of We're Going to Win the Twin Zine, the Prospect Edition, is available now. Uh, So check that out. I'll put a link down in the description. Thanks for checking this one out. Uh, Enjoy the, the big game today. We'll talk again soon.